What is up, my fellow Chibits? Today, I'm here to bring all of you, once again, another anime review on Kiz Naiver Episode 4. This was a pretty entertaining episode because we actually get some information about the plot, which is to be expected because it's about time we get a little bit more information about the plot, but also a lot of questions are brought to the table, especially when it comes to that ending of the episode because it lets us know that there is more people besides our cast of characters the seven deadly sins that are being experimented on which it's already been hinted at since the first episode because of our main character Katsuhi Ahira because as we know he no longer can feel any pain or anything and it was shown with a flashback a long time ago in the first episode that you had it to where he had this girl that he met and she disappeared from his life, and it was kind of like hinting that he got experimented on that caused him to lose, you know, pain, where he can't feel pain anymore. And with this episode, it kind of grows the connection that Sonozaki is actually the girl that Katsuhira met in the past and got to know really well, because that was kind of pretty much point blank said to us at the beginning of this episode. But the main thing I need to talk about right now is that when it comes to... The actual episode overall with the characters it did a very good job with setting up the interactions with them and I gotta say that's one thing this series really has going for it it is the character interactions because at this time when it comes to this series it's not really amazing when it comes to the plot and I, I've discussed this already because Trigger right now is going at this at an angle as the characters. For instance, they're making us all look at the characters, giving these characters life, the spunky, quirky personalities, and making us enjoy them and making us appreciate when they're on the screen. And I love the direction Trigger is taking this series when it comes to that because they had only two options. They either had, actually they had three options. They had one option to where they could, you know, develop the characters, make us enjoy the characters, but they kind of push aside the plot a little bit until later on in the middle of the series or later towards the end. Or they could tell us the plot, give us a lot of info dump, but make the characters feel shallow and bland, which that would have been very bad. And, or they could have went the you know third route, they could have tried to put both of these things together, which could have took a lot of work, and you have to be really good at making anime, or writing in general, which I'm not saying Trigger can't do, I'm just saying it would take a lot of effort, and I don't know if Trigger could be able to accomplish such a feat by giving great character development like they already have done, but also giving us great plot advancement, which they have done really well so far. But... I would say the third option would be very bad if they tried to put both of those together at once because it might feel very rushed and kind of off-putting. So, I love the direction that Keys Naiver is actually going with the characters, and I love how they're slowly incorporating these plot points throughout the entirety of these episodes, especially with this episode of showing a different side of the story with, you know, these two students that are getting upset with Tenga because they need money, and then we come to find out at the end of the episode they also now share each other's pain, and also how the entire city, you know, is a project, there's experiments going on and we're getting a little bit more information about the background of why this project is going on but we didn't get the entire picture yet which I'm willing to bet will be explained in maybe two to three episodes but overall though the episode had some really good moments when it came to comedy romance and drama and also some savage burns oh my god <laughs> Yuta was looking at Honoka and it's like you have a really nice pair of tits and I'm like Bruh, like damn, he's like, I don't, your personality's very nasty, but you have a nice set of boobs. And I'm like, bro, bro, Yuta, chill, chill, man. And then Hanukkah comes back, it's like, oh yeah, you also had uh, bigger boobs while you were in grade school. That fucking savage fucking oh, got destroyed. Like if he was in Dragon Ball Z, he would need a sensu bean. He would need a sensu bean after that fucking burn because... That's how bad that shit was. That man got burnt so bad because she's like, your boobs were bigger than mine when you were in grade school. Yuta, oh my god, it just holy shit, the burn is unreal right now when it came to that. That made me laugh my ass off because Honoka, I, I gotta say, she's probably the best girl besides, you know, Chidori. You know, I actually really like Honoka. I know she has a shitty personality, and usually I'm not a person that likes that type of character, but I just love how her character meshes with the cast. It just the way she meshes with the cast of how all these characters are spunky, quirky, happy, and all that, and the way she's just so negative downer, she's just an asshole amongst a bunch. It's just, it's 
funny. It, it's very funny the way she reacts. And, like, I mean, how she did, you know, in the first episode and second episode. Like, like, oh, yeah, I was just joking. You think I really killed someone? That was some fucked up shit when he, she did that. So, already two parts, she was pretty damn savage in this series. So, I can't wait to see what else she does on round three. But getting off of that, though, there's also some romance going on in this. And... I like that. I'm a big fan of romance. I think majority of you achievements know how I feel about romance in anime and manga. It's one of my personal favorite genres. And so, seeing romance in Kiz Naiver, it's kind of making me more attached to this series. But also, seeing how Chidori is going to be kind of working towards getting in a romantic relationship with Katsuhira, it kind of has me excited. But, Tenga is actually going to be helping her on the side. And this automatically makes me think that maybe Tenga and Chidori might become a couple in some form. There's already examples that the romance between Katsuhira and Chidori would not probably work out. Because as I've already said earlier on in this video, Sonozaki, the flashbacks, is kind of letting us know that the girl that Katsuhira saw in the past when he was younger, before when he still had pain and emotions, that girl was Sonozaki. So, that means that most likely those two will get together, those two have a romantic relationship, and Chidori most likely is gonna get shafted. So, Tenga being the person there for her, it makes me excited, because that that's pretty cool. I'd like Tenga with, uh, you know, Chidori. I mean, she seems like she would work with Tenga, and I, I would like the chemistry between those two. It seems like it would work. So, yeah, hopefully that does happen, because I, I believe Chidori... Uh, she's way too good. She's way too good for Katsuhira. I, I really think she is. I mean, the way she cares for him, the way, you know, she acts around him. I just feel like Tenga and her would, you know, mesh so much better. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about this week's episode of Keys Naiver? Hopefully I said the name right this time. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.